And I argue with Mac when Mac says, well, we need a fresh word. I say, what is a fresh word? <laughs> Tell me, is it something that you just <laughs> coin that comes out of your mouth that we should add to the Bible? What are you talking about? And uh, finally, we came to the conclusion, I came to the conclusion that a fresh word was an interpretation of the scripture and an application. If you're talking application, so now is London back with us? Yeah, he's yes, back. Sir, he's back. Yeah. I need to define what is prophetic because all of us are prophets. All of us are prophets. Now, prophetic is either to foretell or to forth tell. Correct. Greetings, everyone. Um, we're here today on a very serious issue. Um, and the issue is concerning prophecy. And the video I saw of Bishop Noel Jones, in which he was in tears. Um, so I'm trying to take my time with this without rushing through this. So just bear with me because I'm trying to make some serious points here. All right. Um, this particular clip that you have just watched of Bishop Noel Jones, I took a couple of pieces from that that I had issues with. Um, one of the things he said is that, you know, you we need a fresh word. And that is correct. We do need a fresh word. Um, his interpretation of a fresh word and my interpretation is very My different. interpretation is hearing from somebody new within the body of Christ. Even better, somebody sent from God. Okay, the other thing that Bishop Noel talked about was, um, do we need to add anything to the Bible after you hear what the person has to say? And no, you do not need to add anything to the Bible. Let's be clear about that. Um, what you need to do and what the rest of the world need to do is heed the warnings and repent. And pastors and bishops and everybody within the body of Christ, man your stations, do your job. I'm doing my job. You as a bishop, do your job. You know what the Bible says. Your only problem, bishop, is you don't believe it. Um, and then you said something that I was pretty shocked over. You said, and I quote, all of us are prophets. See, that's the problem right there. All of us are not prophets. That's the damn problem right there. Okay, what we're going to do is get this Bible out. I'm going to teach you something that you should be teaching me. And it says right here, Numbers 12, 6. And I have to take my glasses off in order to see this. It says Numbers 12, 6. And the Lord said, now hear what I have to say. Or now hear my words. When there are prophets among you, I reveal myself to them in visions and I speak to them in dreams. Reveal myself to them in visions and speak to them in dreams. That means they are actually having visions in the night, just like the prophets you read in the Bible. And they are also hearing, audibly hearing the voice of the living God in heaven in their dreams. Now, if we were to take those words and skip past that, guess what? Everybody would try to be a prophet. But those words, Numbers 12, 6, and everybody keep that in your head and somewhere in the back of your mind and just keep it in wherever you could keep it so that way you can remember that Numbers 12, 6 tells you what a prophet is. We can't skip around that because if you skip around that, you have ignored what God says a prophet is. And then the people who pretend to be prophets will go to hell. This is a very, very important issue that we cannot continue to ignore. What I need is to understand, where is it that God has given us such power that if somebody don't sow a seed, they gonna be dead? No. No. Now you listen to it the way I said it. So that way you can hear it, what you said. Now, the person that you're talking about 
you've heard that they've said, if somebody don't give me money, they're going to die. Now, how does that make any sense? That to me sounds like robbery. And it sounds like voodoo and or witchcraft. And now let's see. Money has nothing to do with prophecy. If someone wants to leave an offering, that is fine, but not for prophecy. I wanted to make sure that I was able to capture what I want everybody out there to know. Now, if somebody wants to leave a person who really has the gift of prophecy, some money just for an offering so they can buy a cup of coffee, or if they just want to buy some groceries, money like that. If they want to leave them some money, they can leave it, but not somebody saying, if you don't give me money, I'm, I'm not going to prophesy. That does not sound like the will of God to me at all. Matter of fact, it's not the will of God. And it actually says that Bishop Noel, also in your Bible, it talks about um, us not accepting money for, for these gifts. And so what I want you to, to do, Bishop Noel, is lean more on that Bible. You are a biblicist. You said that you know the Bible like pre pretty much like the back of your hand is what I get when you're saying you're a biblicist. If you know the Bible like the back of your hand, you can't let somebody come in and fool you on everything that they're doing, pretending to be prophets. And also, doesn't it say something about two witnesses in the last days? There are not all these prophets running around. This reminds me of the prophets of Baal. And now I understand why Elijah was so pissed off, because it makes me pissed off right now. Knowing the kind of relationship I have with God, and he actually speaks to me in dreams. Audibly, I hear his voice, and I have visions in the night. And so when I hear this kind of silliness, this kind of craziness, this kind of boldness coming from false prophets, it, it's, it sends shivers up my, I mean, shivers up my spine. I don't see how in the world, they some brave souls is all I got to tell you. Them people are some brave souls, but you know what it says. So you go by what the Bible says. And when, so when they're saying what they're saying, you preach what the Bible says, because the Bible is telling the truth. And oh, why, first of all, why didn't my prophets tell me that this pandemic was coming? Number one, everybody yeah. I heard, everybody I heard in 2020, only uh, Passion Java said to me that this is a year of the rat. And then, of course, the bat is a rat, and here comes a pandemic. I said, and I'm not prophetic in my calling, but I said that this is a year of manifestation. I didn't know God would strip us naked. I didn't know. I just said it, but why don't we take this gift to the hospital when Jesus did all of this stuff? He said, go show yourself to the priest. Why don't we take some of these gifts to the hospital instead of taking offerings from church folk over diseases and stuff that they have? Why don't we take it to the hospital where a doctor can prove what it is we said happened? Hallelujah. I am a biblicist. Understand this. Uh, Kevin, Simon, yep. all of us guys are biblicists. Yeah. We believe yeah. that and there's before. nothing we gonna get that don't come out of that Bible. And this is why the people are mad now and we're losing people all over the world mm. because we have, oh we have protected mm. things that have left them wounded. Yeah. My church yeah. is saying to me now, they say to me, and they, they leave me broken. Come on, oh. Because they're saying to me, My God. Mm. What, mm. Why didn't you tell us this was coming? Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Why, why yeah. didn't the prophets, we had all the prophets, we gave them all our money? They, yeah. we, wow. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I, I, I think and, we're broken, and I'm working my heart out trying to, to recover. Yes, people who are broken don't understand. 
Thank you. What we did. What we did. What we did. Mm. We broke him. We broke him. We broke him. We broke him. You got to hear what I hear. You got to feel what I feel. Mm. And, and deal with who I deal with. People who are genuine would give their life. Yeah. And they're broken mm. because we say a lot of stuff. Follow my ministry at Prophetess Brenda Saw Jesus on Instagram, LinkedIn, YouTube, MySpace, and Tumblr. On Twitter, it's at Brenda Saw Jesus. On Facebook, it's at Real Prophetess. Greetings. I had a dream on June 27, 2018. In the dream, God's eye filled the whole outside view. God sent a horrible storm. I heard thunder, strong wind, sound of pouring rain, and I saw lightning. The rain began to pour into the house from above. My husband and I ran and we hurried up to the back room, trying to escape the incoming rain. I had migrant families in each room. My heart was racing because I was so very scared of the punishing storm. After the storm, the sun began to come out. So I looked outside of the window and at least six migrant children lay on the ground dead. I screamed, hollered, and cried. It was such a sad sight. As my husband and I prepared to go outside, I decided to take another look outside and God's eye frighteningly filled the outside view. I looked right into God's eye, but I could not look any longer. I fearfully laid my head on the table and I cried harder. God is very real. Everybody on earth, including the preachers, need to be down on your faces. Repent while there is still time. I invite all who are listening to be saved before Jesus Christ comes in like a flood. When you see him, it would be too late. Pray with me. Jesus, please forgive me for my sins. I believe you died on the cross and was raised for me. Please come into my heart and save my soul. Amen. For those of you who hear this and don't believe, pray anyway and ask God to come into your heart and work with you. Amen. You may leave your questions and prayer requests at www.anchor.fm forward slash prophetess dash Brenda dash Saul dash Jesus forward slash message. Follow my ministry at Prophetess Brenda Saw Jesus on Instagram, LinkedIn, YouTube, MySpace, and Tumblr. On Twitter, it's at Brenda Saw Jesus. On Facebook, it's at Real Prophetess.